closer to heaven. It feels good. Love 99.5 FM. 99.5 FM. Welcome to Daily Focus on Love 99.5 FM. Prepare your mind and soul for today's message. Daily Focus on Love 99.5 FM. Start your day right with a word from God. With hope. Hi, welcome to Relevant Life, a program brought to you by Mid Country Chapel to encourage, motivate, and bring this generation closer to God. Relevant Life is proudly sponsored by Aid in Pharmacy Swami Marco, ZTH Company Limited, Asafo and Amakom, Morton's Pharmacy, TUC Junction. Stay tuned as our head pastor, Reverend David Kwanza, brings you today's message. Another week and bringing us together in your presence. Out of Zion, your word says you command blessings. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, you will speak blessings upon your people in the name of Jesus and we will be lifted in Jesus' name. I pray for the right response from every one of us so that we'll be able to receive the engrafted word that is able to change our lives in the name of Jesus. This morning as I minister, I pray that faith will be built in the heart of God's people. So that by that faith, you will be victorious in the name of Jesus. I pray that in any area of your need, the Lord will minister to you in the name of Jesus. And lift you up in Jesus' name and bring you to the place you desire and the place God has ordained for you. Father, we thank you so much that the Spirit of God is here to effect your will. And so let your will be done among us in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over any presence that is not of you and we are rested right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray the power of the Lord to take over. That everyone here, hearing my voice, hearing the word of the Lord, shall never be the same again. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. Let's go straight to the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 61. And we're ministering today on beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Nazar chapter 61 and the verse number 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He's been anointed to preach the good tidings unto the meek. God is saying that his word makes impact in the life of the meek. Scriptures are not preached unto everybody, anybody. It is preached unto meek hearts. But those are the hearts that benefit from it. People that go before God humbly. People that acknowledge their emptiness and ordinariness. People that want true change in their lives and in their heart. People that want to get somewhere. Now the spirit of God is the one who is preaching through Isaiah. And years later, Jesus will quote the same thing in Luke chapter 4. It means that it doesn't matter what the spirit is trying to do unless the hearts of people are meek, the word of God doesn't benefit them. It also means that meekness gives access. That the power of the Holy Spirit though, it can never change a person's life unless they receive the word of the Lord with meekness. With humility. It means that there are certain things and certain hearts that makes the word of God impossible. Amen. These are not words of a man. This is a word that are coming forth by the spirit. But it targets the meek. Humble people. Respectful people. Submissive people unto God. And that's why somebody can go to church all their life and they'll be failures. Can go to church all their life and struggle because their heart must be receptive to the word of the Lord through meekness. Real people. I want a better life. I want to change. I want God to take me to places. I want to become something. And I know that the only way to get there is by receiving God's word humbly. 
Now they sit before God. Not already having made their mind up. They embrace the word of the Lord. Not thinking that I know. I know. I'm experienced. I know what it takes. I have what it takes. Spirit can't penetrate. Because their mind is already made up. One of the greatest tragedies in life, I believe, is to come to a place in life where advancing, becoming something is impossible. Dreams become and seem impossible, but there is no heart to bring a change. The heart is unwell and it is stuck so much in its past. It believes too much in its own experiences. It hasn't been able to draw a line between fantasy and the reality of the word of God. So the spirit of God is speaking the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah but it is for the meek heart. Real people. And what he's saying that he had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. So the meek person whom the spirit of God is speaking to. His broken heart is going to be healed. Liberty is going to come in the midst of their captivity. They're going to be set free. And then prison doors are going to be broken. How, pastor? Because the spirit of God, who is the agency of these divine provisions, has found a meek heart. An accessible heart. A heart that has not finished the race at age 28. Somebody who did not finish too early. The prophet goes on by saying in the verse number 2. Look at this quickly. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance to our God to comfort all that mourn. Comfort is coming to you in the name of Jesus. The verse number 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now here again, he's opening our eyes unto something. They are in Zion, the house of God. They are in the presence of God. Who goes to Zion? Those are children of God. Those are people of God. Those are believers. Those are followers of Christ. But for some reason they are mourning. Not that they are mourning in their homes. Mourning at their uh, business and workplaces. They are not mourning at funerals. They are not mourning at meetings. Social meetings. They are in Zion and they are mourning. They go to church and they are not happy. They go to church and they are not glad in life. He said that they mourn in Zion. I wonder why the prophet was so specific about this. What it means that it is possible to be a Christian. It is impossible to go to the house of the Lord. It is impossible to be a church attendee and be mourning in life. Unhappy. Feel unwell. Not in terms of health, but in terms of the soul. Not enjoying life. Not excited about Jesus. Not excited about the cross. It is possible. That's what he's saying. It does happen. But when we have come to that place where we have God, we know him and we follow him, and even in Zion we are mourning, God comes in, hallelujah, with a remedy. He comes in with all the answers that we need. He comes in with a strength and a spirit and his power to liberate and to release. The Lord liberate and release you in the mighty name of Jesus. May the going to church that you do every week be an exciting thing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. May your joy never be stolen in Jesus name. May your happiness be endless in the mighty name of Jesus. There might be mourning in Zion but God has a remedy. He knows how to take the pain out of the heart of his people. He knows how to dismiss every sorrow from the heart of his people. God has a way. He has a plan to give unto them beauty for ashes. Those that are mourning in Zion, the first concern of God is to give them beauty for ashes. 
And then the Bible said, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Hallelujah. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So in the midst of the pain or sorrow or whatever that is going on in the heart of the person god does something so that his name will be glorified may the lord do powerful things in your life so that his name will be glorified may elohim do wonderful things in your lives so that his name will be glorified may the lord do marvelous things in your life i see marvelous things happening to you in the mighty name of jesus that's why we are not bothered by whatever goes on around us that's why we are not troubled about whatever change that takes place around us because we know that at the end of the day in the name of jesus as mourners in zion god will bring the oil of joy and god will put upon us the garment of praise this morning if you were so troubled and so so sorrowful i pray that the lord put upon you the garment of praise and the oil of joy fill your life that's what the Lord does. Hallelujah. So it's not strange when you were Christian and you face some challenges and you go through certain things. That even during the praise and the worship time, you might not be happy. The choir is singing. You might not be feeling at your best. But God said, I have a remedy for you. I'm going to put on you the oil of joy. Receive the oil of joy. In the name of Jesus. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The God that we serve turns ashes into beauty. Ashes represent the end of an era. Wherever the Bible talks about ashes, many of the times, it has a representation for death. When God talks about ashes, he's talking about the death of a dream. When a dream comes to an end, something that you dreamt about and you had so much hope in, and you felt that it's going to be the one change maker in your life. And then suddenly, it comes to an abrupt end. That's what ashes mean. Ashes means erosion of your dream. So right before your eyes, you see the dream eroding. Sometimes it happens to business people. Where you make an investment and then suddenly you see your investment going down the drain. Sometimes it's even much more crazy when you raise the loan to do that. So before your eyes you see the business sinking and every investment that you have made going down the drain. That's when ashes begin to stare you in the eyes. And the dreams become eroded out of your life. Ashes also means that the bend down of gains... By hard work, by difficult choices, by major sacrifices that you made. Now it can be so sad that you can pay thousands of dollars, sometimes dollars, to acquire a certificate. And after that, it is just lying down there in your wardrobe, in your drawer. It couldn't produce the job. But while at school, we were thinking that as soon as I finish, oh my God, I'm going to be one of those top executives in the UN. And there it lies. No job to offer, no salary to earn. But the dreams were alive and the hopes were strong while you sat in that lecture hall. It's all bent down. The gains are lost. Ashes represent termination of the source of joy. It happens sometimes even in marriages. Where the beautiful bride becomes the worst of people the husband has ever seen. Or the wonderful, tall, handsome guy becomes an angry monster. The joy that the lady felt or the joy that the man felt that marriage is going to bring him is lost. Completely terminated. They found themselves in an ashy stage of life. And sometimes the loss becomes so unbearable that you become unable to envision a new beginning. It's so painful because the extent you went and the hopes you had and the sacrifices you made all of it going down the drain like that makes it impossible for you to envision how do i start again how am i going to be able to build all of that up again how am i going to start so you can look at years you can look at money 
You can look at strength, energy, time that has gone into it and it ended up in, in nothing. And it's not difficult for you to even have the strength to start again. When Israel were mourning in Zion, they were remembering the good old days. And they were stuck with the reality that nothing will ever be the same again. They are mourning because they want to back, bounce back. But how? How do you get all that money to start afresh? How do you have all that strength? With all the prayer, with everything done, with all the faith released. And it came to this. How can I even be sure that the next try would also end up the same? So they wished for the good old days to come back. But it was not seeming possible. At this time, they are facing the rebuilding of the temple. But the glorious temple that was destroyed is gone. This new temple is not like the old one. Completely beaten. Completely exhausted. In a hopeless situation. Ashes. And all your dreams are bent down. And all hope is lost. Nothing seemed to ever be the same again. The journey ahead seems long. And the road seems so dark. God sent a prophet to them. The word of the Lord is coming to you. God sent a servant unto them. And told them that I'm going to put beauty. I'm going to give beauty. In the midst of these ashes, there's going to be a turning around in the name of Jesus. And this morning, I'm speaking to every heart that thought that the good old days are gone. Everyone that thought that, oh my God, I've lost opportunities and I, I don't think I'm going to find the, invest, the money again to try this thing again. That, that's why I'm standing here. God said that there is beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty is coming upon your life and ashes are going to disappear. I prophesy a disappearance of the ashes in your life in the name of Jesus. I prophesy an end to the pain in the mighty name of Jesus. There's going to be a rebirthing. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a bouncing back in the mighty name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. With God, nothing is impossible. With God, all things are possible. And he's the God that is able to take the ashes away and then replace them with his beauty. Oh, God is too strong. He's stronger than the problem. He's stronger than the burden. He's stronger than the trouble. He's stronger than anything that you have ever come across in life. I tell you, there is always recovery in God. And his power is always available to restore and to give back unto us. What the enemy has done in our lives. Ashes. But God tells us that there is recovery. I was born in a farmland with my grandmother and my grandfather. One thing I saw seasonally on a yearly basis was the weeding or the clearing of a new parcel of land and the burning of all the trees on it. I used to like the beginning of the rainy seasons like that because it brought a lot of snails. Because once the bush is cleared, and the whole place, and we wait. He will wait for some days and weeks for the for the weed and the cleared plants and uh, all of them to dry up, and then they will burn it. And when it is burnt, and we go through removing the stumps of trees, you come across a lot of uh, snails, and we pick the snails, and we enjoy them. And then somebody is saying, but we used to enjoy them. But what kept on going through my mind is why the need to always burn the soil. Burn the plants, burn the trees, burn the bushes. Why was that necessary? Can't we just weed and then take the stumps out and replant? But the burning into ashes was so significant. Because in that death, 
of the plants and the burning of the leaves, there is the release of nutrients into the soil for the next harvest to be made great. So although there have been trees that have been cleared and weeds that have been cleared and burnt on the soil, it is bringing some kind of renewal to the soil so that the next planting will yield well. So it signified death and burning, but out of it was going to come recovery that was marvelous. The truth about life is that you must always see two two. Somebody say two two. It's important to do that in life. Those who get stuck in life sees in only one way. So when something happens, they're only looking at the loss. They're looking at the loss of job, loss of business, loss of money, loss of marriage. And then that brings their life to a screeching halt. Halt. But if you are somebody that looks at things too, too, oh my God, life is different. You begin to see that the place is full of darkness. We don't have to withdraw from the journey. What we need to do is to introduce light so that we can see further. Somebody is going to see further. When you realize that you are poor financially, it doesn't mean that life comes to an end. It is an opportunity for you to say that, oh my God, this is my situation. And I'm going to do everything that is possible in the name of Jesus so that I can also get there. You realize that when they were mourning in Zion, the Bible said that go and preach the gospel to the poor. So the poor doesn't give up. The poor doesn't run away. They receive the word of the Lord and their lot has changed in the mighty name of Jesus. So year after year, after year after year, my grandfather will still do that again and again and again and again and again. You might call it ashes. But God said there is beauty that comes out of it. I came to tell you that every desperate situation you are in today, hallelujah, it can turn around and it is turning around. I preach with an anointing from the Holy Ghost. And every desperate situation is turning around in the mighty name of Jesus. Every death situation is coming alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, there's a coming alive of finances. There's a coming alive of relationships in the name of Jesus. There's a coming alive of business in Jesus' mighty name. There's a coming alive of your health in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a coming alive of your finances in Jesus' name. And there is the coming alive of opportunities. Out of the ashes comes beauty. So when the land is burnt, you see black and ash colored stuff. And then within some few weeks after the planting has been done and the first rains has hit it, amen, you begin to see green blades of corn. You have to see two, two. In the Hebrew world, men are always advised to be two-faced in life. If you are a one-faced man, you are in trouble. Because you come and tell your wife, the thing I've tried, that there's no job out there. I've done my best. Have you heard that before? People who look only one way, that's what they say. I've, turned, I've tried my best. But when you were a two-faced man, you go out there, you try to get a job, and there is no job, and you come home, walking tall, with a smile on your face, because you have to leave that boredom and dejection in the street. You don't bring it home. So when you, when you enter home, your wife is looking at you with a smile. The children are thinking, oh, there comes the lion and the conqueror. Our father from another mother. Are you here with me today? There comes the champion. So in the family, he's a champion. In the family, he's a goal, achiever. In the family, he's a giant. And when he get out there and go through whatever rejection and pain, he is still a champion in his family. One of these days, one of these days, that story is changed. So in his home, he's the same person. He doesn't bring his complaining and misery to the dining table. He's a giant. Everybody's looking up onto him. He's a man. The children are looking at her. They're unbreakable in the family. Then they become proud of their surname. Is somebody in church today? Are there guys in this place? 
Every one of you is going to become a father. Some of you are already fathers. Man up in the name of Jesus. Don't bring your troubles home. In the tree, they say something. I says, Oh, Papa, I'm Bob Brown. I'll come for. Have you heard that before? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Man up. Amen. Don't look at things in only one way. So, one of the most wonderful languages in the world is the Hebrew language. Everything is two. One word can mean seven things. So, when Hebrew says garbage, which we call bola, now bola is the word here. In Hebrew, it also means riches. It means abundance. It means gold. So if you live in a place where there are Hebrew people and Jew people all over the place and you want to be like Zoom Lion, they will stop you. They will take it. Because they know that out of that trash, can I hear an amen here? Comes abundance. Oh, now ball away so they are here It is gold unto somebody else. So you don't see ashes alone. You don't see problems alone. Don't see lack of job, lack of peace, lack of joy. Don't see lack of opportunities in Ghana. Don't let everything be bleak in your view. Go beyond it. Hallelujah. Because the God that you serve is always able to bring beauty out of ashes in the name of Jesus. You know, the, it's, it's very interesting how how God is. Look, can I do a little bit of teaching and then continue? The word for ashes is Epher. E-P-H-E-R. Ashes. The word for beauty is fear. P-H-E-E-R. I was looking at this and I'm like, God, you are, you are just too amazing. You know, you know what that means? It's an interplay of letters to change the situation that is so bad to a golden opportunity. All that God did was to move and eat. That's all he did. So he removes the capital of the ashes and moves it to be near the E. He's, he was saying that E. Now that P H E E R E P H R. There is E here. Let me move this E near to that E. And the situation is changed. This God is so powerful. It might look so, so impossible in your eyes. But he's saying that for me it is simple. It is only just an interplay of letters. I just have to move it from this place unto that place. And the situation has changed. It can take an hour. It can take a day. It can take a month. It can take a week. But the truth is that God does it. I see I sustained into beauty right now in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine how God, how simple it would be for God to just move one letter? But when it comes to the English, beauty, ashes, life, death, hey, the gap is too big, oh, it is not any gap to God. Are you with me today? Praise the Lord. It is so simple for him. In Ezekiel, the chapter number 37, God brought the prophet to the valley of dry bones. The description of what is going on there, as made by the prophet, is that they were very dry. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. It's always an honor to come to you at such a time of your day to bring you such truth, to bring you such light and word of the Lord to begin your day with and to construct your day, your week and the months coming with the word of the Lord. My name is Reverend David Seth Kwansa. I'm the head pastor of Mid Country Chapel. We meet at a Macomb traffic light opposite the children's park and uh, every Sunday our services start at 7 a.m. Uh, to 9.15. That is the first service and the second service starts at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. We invite you to come and fellowship with us. We invite you to come and worship with us. 
It's a season where God is doing powerful things in spite of the challenges that our world is going through. And so we're honored to have you tuning in to our broadcast and being part of this. I invite you every Thursday morning at exactly 5.20 on Love FM to come and be part of this. The Lord bless you so much. We'll be waiting for you at church. We have meetings also on Wednesday evenings at exactly 6 o'clock, which ends at 8. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful day. We'll be with you again. Bye-bye. You can also be a part of this great ministry by